out. Okay, so I guess we're live uh, in terms of, you know, recording. Um, and uh, we are uh, hosting the uh, 13th June uh, Chaos Asia meeting at 8 a.m. Um, IST. So <clears throat> typically... Um, uh, there's an agenda item um, doc that uh, we circulate, which is right here. And I'll paste that on the chat for everyone who's, uh, for the convenience of everyone who's joined. Um, secondly, um, uh, we also have a Slack channel uh, on the Chaos Slack, which is the uh, hashtag Chaos Asia. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much the... Um, uh, you know, housekeeping items for the day. We, I'd request you to uh, write your names on the agenda doc if you're an attendee. It would help us uh, calibrate the interest in this initiative. That's that's one thing. Um. So now I'm going to go over to the agenda doc and uh, start, uh, you know, going through the items uh, that I've listed there. Um, I'll also take a pause between each item, uh, as you all are already aware. Uh, and I will, um, you know, un understand if there are any questions from you or if there are any, um, you know, uh, suggestions or something that you have. So, uh, just going to start sharing. All right. Okay. So, uh, so for today's uh, agenda uh, items, we have three main ones. Uh, one is the metric standardization initiative. Now, the this I know that uh, pro I probably bring up in every call uh, bec because it's one of those initiatives that a lot of people um, who don't attend this call um, in terms of like uh, people from OSPOs and people from, uh, you know, research groups, they don't really attend this call, but they're really interested in um, uh, sort of developing uh, and uh, standardizing these metrics. So, um that's that's in progress right now um and uh we've actually uh had like i had a conversation with shane coglin and um uh, the lf open chain project because they have standardized a whole uh um open chain uh specification uh in the year 2020 i believe or slightly after that but um uh, uh, we could benefit from that experience. And of course, since Shane is also part of uh, the Linux Foundation, we could uh, sort of learn um, how to, you know, interact with uh, the JDF and the LF from them. So I had that call with him. Um, now, uh, I've updated the entire community on the metrics development call that was held last week. So it's held every alternate week um, at 8 30 p.m uh ist i believe i'm not sure if yeah, it's 8 30 p.m ist which would potentially mean it's later for folks from china and japan to join in uh which is why um you know i had to uh sort of uh be the bridge here um between the japanese ospo folks uh who were interested um and uh, convey that uh, you know stand uh, communication there but also i conveyed it to the um japanese ospo folks masuki and hero uh, hero fukuchi san on the slack channel uh, you would have seen the message there um we sort of need uh, one of the agenda items that came out of the metrics development and the ospo calls were that since this is a standardization initiative and since a uh, lot more folks would be interested who could potentially not join um, on a recorded call or would not be able to provide inputs on a recorded call. We'd be establishing a Chatham House Rules call. And that, uh, that call hasn't been slotted on the calendar yet. So one of the action items for me today would be to understand where we are with respect to that on... Um, on that calls slotting into our uh, calendar because um, uh, we start uh, the the first step towards standardization of the metrics and the metric models we have is of course getting in touch with uh, the JDF which is a sub foundation under the LF that is in progress but 
Also, um, the content that we have on our website, the metrics and the metric models, they sort of uh, need to be converted into a format that's more appropriate to be conveyed as a uh, standard. So we are converting it into a specification. Uh, you can go through the entire agenda doc. We've actually listed what all we need to do there and what are the next steps. So that is one of the things that um, we're going to try doing. And uh, the other thing is we're ongoing in terms of conversations with the JDF and um, uh, we're going to see how that goes uh, and what they require from us in terms of like collaboration and uh, who is going to represent them there and stuff like that. So I'm going to take a pause here because uh, I want to see if there are any questions um, and yeah. Uh, please feel free to voice out any questions or any suggestions or concerns that you might have. Okay, nobody has questions, I presume. Uh, so I'm going to go forward. If there are any questions at any point, please feel free to raise your hand or to um, interrupt me because there are just four people on the call. Uh, so I don't want to be the only one speaking and it's okay. Uh, so the next thing that I'm also doing, uh, like, I, like we discussed a couple of calls ago, is... Um, you know, we're, we're trying to partner in terms of like, um, you know, find out um, collaboration opportunities with um, other um, organizations in Asia. So um, OCF actually recently collaborated with um, uh, with the Open Chain Foundation. They're not the same. O OCF is a foundation based in Taiwan, uh, which is the Open Culture Foundation. And... Uh, the Open Chain and Open Culture Foundation had like um, a synergy going on, which is why I reached out to them. Uh, so uh, I have a call. I'm, I'm due to have like a meeting with them later today. So this is and since they were in and they're doing sort of the same sort of work that we do. And um, it's a more around community and project. Uh, and, you know, they also are interested in understanding about community health. So we're sort of uh, having that conversation with them later today. Uh, and uh, with regards to previous um, folks that we spoke to, uh, First United actually came back saying that they want to um, be badged for the FOSS hack 2024. And uh, even for India FOSS, which is later in the year, uh, in September, they will be pursuing a badging initiative, but they're going to see, um, they're going to first try out with FOSS hack 2024, the process and everything. And then later on for uh, other events, they might pursue this based on the feedback that they get from their community. So with regards to collaboration opportunities, that's pretty much it. Um, again, I'm going to pause here and see if you have any questions. Yeah, I, I want to add to the, because I saw, uh, I see there's the Open Culture Foundation based in Taiwan. And yeah. I know there are similar, uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of uh, Kai Yuan Shu. That's... Uh, yes, that, I have. Yes. I have, yeah. I actually wanted to attend um, the... I, I know the uh, community over code in yeah, Hangzhou, but right? Yeah. Unfortunately, the funding and the logistics didn't go through uh, for that one. And also the visa timelines were very stringent, uh, given that I'm also traveling next week. So it did not work through. But um, I would be happy to sort of uh, like, um, you know, if uh, if you are able to sort of uh, bridge that gap for us, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure of the uh, term. Kayu yes, uh, I assume, but uh, that uh, it's one of the leading, um, uh, leading nonprofit organizations that yes. actually work. With, yeah, so that would be really helpful. Uh, the reason yes. being, uh, mm -hmm. Yehui also uh is um trying to talk to people from Open Euler, uh, not Open Euler, the Open Atom Foundation, uh, mm -hmm. for. Uh, feedback on the metrics and the metric development uh, initiative that we have right now because um, 
one of the things that is a requisite or a requirement when it comes to the standardization is feedback from the industry. Uh, we sort of, uh, we cannot go to ISO, which is the standardization organization and uh, say that, you know, hey, here's our spec um, and we need to standardize it. And, uh, you know, we are going through the fast track via JDF. So there needs to be like a solid case made for us as to why we are standardizing it. Um, is there a specific need and is there, you know, industry adoption or industry feedback? Because when you go through the standardization process and you go through the fast track, there needs to be a very solid justification as to why you're taking it. And uh, even during the standardization process, there will be people from the industry who actually revert. Uh, on that, yeah. you know, specification and ask you questions. So any sort of industry feedback that we can get, it would be really helpful. Uh, yes, I have the same feeling. Uh, uh, because I went through the, the 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 agenda and the documentation regarding the standardization, and uh, uh, the one thing I think we need to discuss is why why we want to dis standardize it um yeah. and um if i understand this right the, the the process is quite long from uh what open chain is um at least three years right so three years is what uh, so uh to briefly describe it um once you actually submit the specifications so suppose we have mm -hmm. a thing ready and we are submitting it um it will take six weeks of review and then after that there'll be further comment period and everything so it'll take nine months okay. only to get that thing ready but mm -hmm. um if you're taking the fast track process right um the fast track process is um basically going to narrow it down to uh, nine months but if you're going to directly the iso and pursuing that it will take three years so there you are right uh, but also there's another caveat. Um, there is the problem that uh, none of our metrics and metric models are currently in the format that we sort of need to have when we submit it to ISO. So we need to first draft it into a format, which will be, I think, mm -hmm. done by uh, the folks at uh, Metric Development. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to be liaising with them and helping them work on that as well. Uh, but what... Other than that, we also need industry feedback. These uh, folks okay. that opened, they opened it for industry feedback for a period of, I think, five years, which we don't need to do. Uh, we can seek feedback in a shorter period of time and take it to um, ISO, but we need that industry feedback, never mm -hmm. this. So nine months is what we're looking at if there are no comments from mm -hmm. ISO uh, regarding the standard, but there is a need for industry feedback in general. So uh, I see there are five metrics and metrics model that we want to uh, draft in the ISO standard, uh, yep. the ISO format to submit. So uh, we want the industry feedback regarding these five metrics, metrics models, or the overall uh, chaos um, metric system. That's a very good question. Uh, the first thing that we're looking forward to is actually... Um, uh, standardizing what is a metric and what is a metric model when it comes to uh, per the conversation we had last week the first thing we're standardizing is what is a metric and what is a metric model when it comes to um, mm -hmm. the community health uh, in an open source ecosystem because not a lot of people know that right like a community health is such an abstract term it doesn't have a definition. It doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. Like if I tell you what's community health, everybody on this call will have a different answer. We don't have metrics. We don't have metric models. We don't even have a definition to start with. So one of the first things that we're doing is standardizing the terms. Um, and that is something I think the draft is going to be uh, written up um, over the next couple of weeks. And I will, um, you know, partner with Yehui um, and if you're also there like I think uh, you you worked with Yehui before um, yeah. as part of Asia so that also helps like we could sort of tag team on this and uh, figure out um, what needs to be given and the plan is to sort of uh, take the other whatever metric models that we have and the metrics that we have and categorize them and like you know use it as a reference point like we have to see if that option is available to us like typically how a standardization initiative works is once you have a standard suppose you have a standard 
definition for metrics you can't keep revising it every year because it's supposed mm -hmm. to be a standard you can't you can't just randomly say okay you know what i'm going to change the de definition again this year that's not possible you have to um take us uh you have to like be, be done with the standard after like uh, you know um uh, submitting it to the iso and taking their feedback you can't revise it on a yearly basis so we need to see if in case of a, do a document standard, which is the one that we are pursuing, we can have the reference of like one central standard, say a metric or a metric model as the implementation, um, like as the main standard and these various metrics and metric models as implementations of the standard. So suppose we're talking about community awareness or uh, governance or something like that. If we can have those as like sub standards of the main standard, if that's a possibility, we need to explore that with the LF. So mm -hmm. the proposal is to firstly talk about metrics and metric models as a standard. And that's, I think, what Yahui is going to do over the next couple of weeks and float um, with the Open Atom Foundation. So um, okay. what I could do is I could talk to him uh, or maybe we can talk to him and ping him on the mm -hmm. channel mainly and uh, see where we are going with this so that we can partner with him and uh, check if we can, uh, you know, cross-pollinate across um, Kayo and Shazwa. Okay, sure. Does that make sense? I mean, I know it's a little confusing. It's really confusing, the standardization process. It is not easy. <sighs> I It took me like 45 minutes to wrap my head around it. I had to make like a whole pointer list of things to work with and then I had to convey this on a call which took another one and a half hour so uh, it is not easy but um, hopefully um, um, in that agenda doc it's simplified um, in like a concise format so y'all can read through it later on and ask mm -hmm. any questions that you have on slack um, in the meanwhile I will uh, also tag Yahui I think he's on the slack channel for chaos Asia yeah and um, I'll I'll see what we can do with respect to like uh, partnering for um, both these things. So that that would be easy. okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, to the second uh, for like the collaboration opportunities because I know there and uh, we can out outreach to some uh, Ch Chinese mainland based um nurture organizations or even open that um, foundation but just um we need to find maybe if there is a writable or a collaboration um opportunities that, that bring us together and one thing i can think about is uh, we have the dei badging program uh in chaos and uh, yeah. and um like the uh cost uh, that is i'm not sure if it's the uh event yeah. that is um yeah, it's it is by Open Culture Foundation, right? And um the okay, and the 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 Kai Yuan Shi I mentioned they will hold the open source the Coscon the, the the open source yeah. conference in, in in China. Yeah, it that is um uh, uh the like uh over the past decade is almost the the most uh like like is a great event uh open sourcing. Uh, open source festival happening in China, so uh, we might uh, we we can convince them to like to get a badging badging for for that event. That is one like a concrete thing I can uh, that that comes up uh, right now. Um. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's what I'm trying to do internally within the Indian uh, uh this thing as well. Like wherever I can, I am trying to promote the event badging initiative. So um. Mm -hmm. I think it would be a very valuable proposition to actually talk to them and see if there is uh, an opportunity to badge and uh, figure out, you know, if they have any questions around badging or whatever, like we can help them because I am a badger and I think you've been a badger too. So, yeah, um, yeah so I mean, it, it's, it's pretty, um, it's pretty easy for us to help out. So, yeah, I think we should float the uh, idea by uh, both, the, both the organizations we're working with. Like, Coscup, I've already actually mailed them. I have not received a response, um, even though I know, uh, I think her name is Ador. Ador Fu, I'm not sure pronouncing the name <laughs> right, but uh, one of the person, the people on the uh, Coscup um, 
uh, committee of organization. I did mail them and tell them that, you know, we have an event badging initiative. But if I think somebody who they know actually reaches out to them, probably they might have a much better chance of convincing them to take it on rather than me going and saying, hey, you know what? There is an event badging initiative. Do you want to take part? Nobody's going to listen. So if yeah, you're going to... I com I completely understand that I I also don't know the people uh from the cost cost cup cost cup cup side uh, but I I will pay I will type it in the agenda maybe later the um the coscon organized by uh Kai Yuan Shi I know them uh, well and uh, I think that that we had a very great chance that they might be interested to get a DEI badging for um yeah. for that event. Yes, I've also spoken to uh, Nadia from like, um, mm -hmm. she's the board member, yes. she did speak to her, yeah. she said that for community of Accord, they were going to try, but I do not know if, you know, they have the bandwidth right now, given the very short time frame that I did this in, but uh, please, you know, if there's a way yes. that we can go for uh, Coscon, it would be great. Mm -hmm. And I will also talk with Nadia too, because, yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much it um, with respect to collaboration. Anybody else have any questions around what we just spoke? Okay, so I'm now going to go to the next one, uh, which is GitHub issues or PR. So um, a couple of weeks back, I had uh, submitted a PR to formalize our charter. Now, uh, a lot of y'all might wonder why we have a charter. The reason is there's um, like we, we work on a lot of things, right? Like, for example, here we are working on metric standardization we are also coming up with an open source communities in asia database and um, uh, you know if, if people want to get involved in other areas of the project like badging or anything else we need to provide a funnel for them to uh, to get involved in a way that's meaningful to them so um, there are several things that are out of scope even when you talk about all of this and uh, to understand what's in scope and what is out of scope, there needs to be sort of a guideline documentation that tells you that, you know, hey, this is what this group is focused on. And this is what this group doesn't really do. And that is why we have like chart a charter. Now, please bear in mind that even though I say that, you know, this is a guideline documentation, this evolves over time. Because... Uh, a project is comprised of many people like uh, right now, I know there are only four, but there are several other moving parts that collaborate with us, right? Other areas of the project. So as we discover our footing and as we discover who we are individually as a community, this charter will evolve. But as a first draft, um, uh, I have like given... Um, you know, I have given it a try to sort of uh, formalize what our goals should be currently over the next couple of months. And of course, we can revisit this charter as and when we see fit and as and when we feel like, oh, you know what, our um, the direction in which you're moving is changing. So uh, it would be really helpful if, you know, the PR actually um, that I have drafted and submitted to the Chaos Asia repository, um, it would be helpful. Um, Leon, you've mentioned I can't find any link online for this. Uh, could you just elaborate? Because the link is right there. Or are you talking about a different thing? Okay, it, I, it's, it's the same conference or is it called two different names? Uh, which one? Uh, which the which cos, one? Coscon. Yeah, I'm just confused. Is it the same thing? The OCF and... Oh, no, that's oh, not it? the same thing. It's a different conference happening in the China mainland. And Costco, it, it mainly happens in Taiwan. Oh, okay. Because I can't find any link online for that. So I was just uh, oh. wondering. Oh, yes. I will add a, add, add a link to that later. 
Yeah. Uh, so cause cup is by open culture foundation cause con is the one that's happening in beijing in october um yes. and cause cup is by the one so from that you know uh, thread of thought uh, uh zhao actually came to like you know we could collaborate with kaiwan chef for the uh, next one uh, um like cause con so that's how it ended up being there i think i i haven't seen the link either but if uh, zhao has has the link that's uh, pretty cool she can okay it here. uh i'm not sure they've published the link for the event for this year yet uh, because it will happen in october i think uh, the the link for the event haven't been uh online but uh i can share the link for the organization uh the, the taiwan show organization but that's fine they're also there on twitter i know that uh, <laughs> but uh yeah okay. like yeah mm -hmm. so essentially um if there's any um comments on the pr it would be helpful and i'll keep it open for another um of till the next meeting because it's been open for a while so if there is any comment that you have on um you know the direction we are sort of going in it would be really helpful to uh, calibrate and uh, you know, discuss over that PR as to uh, where we are headed over the next couple of months. So, yeah, that's that's about the PR. And uh, I wish Roland were here because uh, he suggested the uh, database. And um, uh, ever since he suggested that, um, I think it's a very good idea to have like a database of um, open source communities in Asia. Um Primarily because um, I think it's such a huge continent, right? Like um, uh, there's there's various communities and it's non-technical and technical. It's not just, um, um, you know, people focused on uh, building out technical stuff. It's people who are responsible for non-technical stuff uh, as well. Like, you know, business, um, uh, uh, even, you know, Kayu and Shri, for example, they're not exactly delving into the technical aspect of things but they are one of the leading yes. uh ospo related and open source related organizations in china there's um you know a bunch of those similar um uh you know organizations in india as well so having that database would really help us and um I'm, I'm not sure if anybody would want to work on this um as of right now because it's a huge undertaking i'm not going to lie um but i wanted to know your thoughts if we should sort of open this up as like a broader project um on the outreach or um, gsoc or whatever because it's a very small project but it also requires a lot of research it's not going to be like a small thing uh wherein you know you just create a web page you just write a csv file and finish it up but you need to know the uh, various communities you need to do the research so would it make sense for someone who is uh, a part of these programs to actually do it or would it be more sensible for people who are already in chaos to actually work on it i'd like to know your thoughts as well First of all, I think this is a great idea to uh, create and maintain such a, a, a database, whether either it's a, a really into a database or we maintain it by a spreadsheet. Um, but I think that, that is a good idea. But um, well, I'm thinking how we can like to um, like to really collect those information or um or letting others to keep adding on the data to this so i mean we're doing it on I... github on like a version control system we'll just have like a... mm -hmm. so uh, if you look at the pr i'm uh, not pr issue here you will see that um there's a sample database here and um like it's it's for researchers this is what roland had provided and uh, we could do an exact copy paste if we want. I'm not saying that we should, but we could. 
and we could have like people contribute to it over time and i have like a um sample list not an extensive list i have like a personal one which i maintain so that um i could reach out for the purpose of chaos asia but that's not a whole and sole list i could open source it i could give it to the person who's working i can even still put it on there that's not a problem but uh, the thing is i really want to understand if it makes sense to put it as part of a program or put it like as a good first issue for people who know coding to start off with in chaos because this involves website design it also involves like a um you know collecting data it's like a multi scoped effort it's not just going to be like hey you know what we have a website come contribute to it no but it involves like building out the website uh, understanding if we want to adhere to the same you know uh, framework that's here uh understand if we want to sort of uh, do go a different way um understand how we are taking the back end side of it are we using a spreadsheet or something else so all of that design choices come into play and that's why i want to see if it makes sense to do it like and put it on a single person or like break it into sub issues and putting it on different people and having them collaborate or making it as part of like a program You mean as a, a program to for newcomers as the first uh, contribution step to add to this database? Is that uh, no, no, no program as in like um you've heard of Google Season of Docs Code or uh, even like maybe Outreachy or something. Outreachy is coming mm -hmm. up again, like I think in winter. So, um. I mean, we could apply to that and have them create this for us. Like we could partner with them. That's what Chaos Africa does. So we could do that, and that would mean like a person who's just dedicatedly working on this, and who's like responsible for this on that part of the things. And then we could obviously have like more people contribute to it as and when it evolves. But the initial scaffolding and initial thing should be like. Outsource it to somebody in like a program, uh, an outreach program like Outreachy or Season of Dog, Season of Core, or anything. I think that at least makes sense to me. I we we can we can try, um, because this program as a starting point. Yeah, because individual contributions, what would happen is somebody will create the scaffold and then leave it. Then somebody will take the spreadsheet and arrange it the way they want and then leave it. And then the third person will come and make some changes in the CS, uh, CSS and then leave it. And it will be like, there'll be different things going on. And to sort of have like a, a sustained point of contact would be difficult. And um. Other than that, we if if we are like planning to expand this beyond Asia, right? Like right now we are talking about just Asia, but there's also an idea if this actually works out as like a project, we could uh, expand this to a global scope. Like again, it would require a lot of work and, you know, it would require a lot of work by the individual regional leads, but still is doable. But so having like a point of contact who's already like responsible for this and who's um, who's interested in creating this would be more um would be more appropriate in my opinion rather than going like an individual contribution way but again like i am i at least that's like my uh you know documentarian mindset coming in it's not like a uh you know i want a new i don't want a new contributor i do want a new contributor i do want more new contributors to come in but it will not be it will not be feasible to take this on on a single shot it will require like multiple new contributors and without actually having that collaborative glue between them and without having a project lead to um sync between them it would be difficult is what i believe mm -hmm. yeah hello yeah, uh, yeah, I do agree with you, like uh, having a single point of uh, contact for leading this project would be fine. And we could uh, sort of think about outreachy or uh, summer of code. 
and apart from that for the research purpose i think we could make a common issue where people or the contributors could uh, give their uh, uh, their communities or whatever uh, the findings they are in there but for the design and the development purpose one single lead for the entire project would be fine and to make it more comp uh, comprehensive we could uh, like mention the global communities and in the filters we could add asia or something no i first thing we should start out with asia because if you start out globally what will happen this scope will be way too mm -hmm. wide to begin with i'm not saying that i don't want it global but if we start our global there'll be way too much information to squeeze in and asian communities typically don't chime in asian communities require that specific outreach where you know people who know them go and tell them that please add it in so i think we should start off with a proof of concept of asian communities then say that hey you know what this project is successful maybe we sort of like um publicize or socialize more about it in the open at different conferences i'm not saying all conferences need to talk about this but some of the conferences we can go and say more stuff about this and then we talk to other regional leads because there are other regional leads in chaos as well um uh, like sele ruth and uh, uh, there are a bunch of others <laughs> but christy so there are all these other regional leads who can actually um, you know talk to their own regions um communities rather than us going and finding out their stuff they already have a list they probably have it somewhere that's local to them they africa has a more centralized list on github but the others would have information about theirs as well so we don't need to actively go and source out those lists we can sort of borrow from them and then we can obviously start inviting contributions just the way this um page has like we can ask people to chime in and contribute which is what i think would be more helpful like starting small and then going big rather than going big and then not reaching anywhere okay yeah that makes more sense uh, starting with the asia the community and then maybe later on we could uh, extend this more yeah and the yeah. security of it yeah sorry sorry sir please yeah oh, i was just saying that i agree with that idea and uh do you think something like air table would be better here in in this this uh this thing I so then what we i do yeah. i we really do but the only thing is air table would have to be paid and oh, there's uh, no, yeah there's no alternative to that uh, i don't think so and uh, the reason why i'm saying no air table is uh the again the reason here is to invite people to contribute to chaos right so if you're if you're like using it <laughs> there's literally no work to be done uh there's just like sourcing the data work to be done uh if you have this uh, on a global uh, like if you have this on a website that's powered by github pages uh like correct, correct. yeah so that's the reason like i would love it like i use air table at my job i love air table i would love to have something on air table but uh, the problem is like uh, that won't help the contributors um learn anything new or contribute in a way that's like people who know software development should be able to do software development wherever they go so yeah. i think it's possible uh, you know we should do that and what i'm thinking is like having a person at least create the scaffold with the basic level of information that we have and we managed to gather with uh, the issue suggestion that uh, manul put forth and once that's done we sort of um, like give one like use outreachy whatever whatever comes like first we use that have a scaffold up and running on uh, via github pages after that we uh, invite contributions from like a wider part socialize this at various meetups conferences whatever and um, we can potentially form a sub project around this like how chaos uh, africa has like a um, has like the event badging as an initiative this might not be an initiative per se but this is definitely a sub project under like chaos um asia and then when it becomes a global thing it could become a sub project as i mean an initiative as well because when it becomes global 
but it goes beyond just the POC scope of it, uh, wherein we're not talking just about Asian communities, we're talking about global communities, it definitely becomes a thing to maintain. So this will have maintainers and this will have like, um, you know, leads actually taking over. So that's where I envision this project going. Uh, but again, might be too early to talk about that side of things. But starting out small is where I think would make sense. And having like an assigned lead right now, a uh, lead in the sense, uh, a person who's responsible for designing and bringing this thing up with respect to Chaos Asia would be helpful. That person will be the designated lead till we have like knowledge sharing and transfer done to other people and then, you know, socialize it and everything else. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that is that is it's more better that way. So like there is something uh, you must be knowing about the the Scrally repo, right? Uh, the the yeah. one that ha has all the meetups in it. It's, yeah, I think to do something very similar, so then people can just like add a pull request and all that. Yes, exactly. Like uh, there are a lot of thing. Uh, there are a lot of repos that do that. So we have like uh rep uh repos on the um CNCF side of things, wherein we have like conferences and everything. So that was a crowdsource list similar to what we're doing right now but again that uh the central project was already brought up and people invited contributions so that bringing up bit i think um it would help if we actually have like a crowdsource list of information before we bring that up um and put it out to outreachy so I think like first sourcing that list would be an important first step so I can give you uh, give the list of things that we have to work with and uh, we can then like you know apply to outreach and it will require some mentorship but i think it can be done um should not be too difficult a task but it will also help the person get embedded into open source yeah that works okay uh so that's it from like my side of things anybody else have any questions or any updates or any discussion items Uh, uh, anybody, yeah, nothing. Yeah, anybody wants to take like the, uh, it's just a very stupid job. Uh, it's a very small job rather, not a stupid job. Uh, it's a small job. Does anybody want to take the uh, mantle to create an issue on the Chaos Asia GitHub repo for crowdsourcing the information? We can then, um, uh, you know, publish it on our socials and then ask as well, socialize it on like our personal socials to ask for data as well so anybody else want to do that i i, I can do that i'm not trying to put it on y'all but if anybody else wants to take that res uh, responsibility i'm happy to like delegate it i don't, don't have like this intense need to control everything so if y'all want to do it <laughs> we can sort of um do it uh on y'all so well if y'all want to take it yeah i, I can take that up i i'll do that Okay. Is, so, is there like a time on that? But is there like a time on that? Like, um. So I mean, I would preferably want it as soon as possible so that we can start collecting data. Outreachy applications open in September. So I am I'm factoring for a lot of you know latency and time lag and uh disinterest here. <laughs> so <laughs> as soon as we can get more information, the and you know have like something ready like i have a lot of it but, but also i would like other people to come in with uh, their you know inputs as well so it would really help uh, uh, yeah. yeah so the, the issue is basically to like just start an issue and then people will add all the known communities yes. in that yeah so basically oh. you create a scaffold issue um i mean i've actually I've done this aim prerequisites and all of that, but you don't need to do it the same way. The thing is to basically um have them contribute um the the name of the you need to decide what fo format firstly. What is the name of the community? A link to the community, um and maybe something like I don't know the way they have your a uh, name of the community, link to the community where it is based probably. Um, and what is the theme of the community theme. and a description like this this particular format if people can give it in um, or if you have another format you can let us know but uh, 
like i'm going by this particular uh, example so if they can like just create an issue where they have to provide these details and uh, in this particular format and uh, then let us know and then we will publicize it i know it's a very small job which is why i asked if anybody else wants to do um because it feels like i'm only doing the issue opening pr opening and then everything and then y'all are just like sitting on like nice people on the call and listening to me so i'm like if y'all want to do this it's great since y'all don't attend the other call uh, yeah. the first step yeah i'll take this up i'll take this up. i have few ideas also we can do something like google sheets to this also i, I want to give it a shot yeah so yeah sure. yeah yeah so once like uh, in the next week or uh, like by the next week if you can get something out uh, that would be great then we can start um, pushing it on our personal socials as well as on the chaos socials as well as on the chaos asia socials so that would be helpful and we can use that as a reference link like hey if you have a community that's already a part of you know um an uh, an asian country please let us know we'd like to include it <laughs> yeah that that works that that's quite i i will create a issue and then we can start sharing so then people can start commenting basically on that i'll i'll have the format on an issue yes thank you so much um uh, but yeah that's pretty much from me uh nothing else i have as an action item but does anybody else have anything to contribute or any questions concerns suggestions Okay. If oh uh, yeah, no, nothing for mine. Okay. If nothing, um, thank you so much, everyone, for attending. It's been a wonderful time talking to all of you, and I'll let you get back to your day. Um, we'll meet in another couple of weeks. And uh, till then, see you and have a great one. Bye. All right. Bye. See you. Thank you, Devia. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, sure. Bye, guys.